you might have heard this song recently on TikTok. Pine Grove is the latest of a particular alternative emo indie scene who have begun to reach a much bigger audience. And while many of you might have just started listening to them, they have been around for over a decade. And for people like me who grew up in the scene, they hold a really special yet complicated place in my life. Pine Grove is a really, really special band. And I wanna go over a little bit about what makes them different and their background and how they recently taught me to love beautiful music once again. Pine Grove comes from a very specific music scene. In the early to mid 2010s, there was something called the fourth wave of emo or maybe the Philadelphia alternative scene. There's a lot of names, but much of the scene was housed in Philadelphia and featured bands like Alex G, Title Fight, Teen, and The World is a Beautiful Place and I'm No Longer Afraid to Die, Foxing, and of course, Pine Grove. And there are a lot more of these bands, but they weren't really united by sound, but rather a common community. They were all loosely indie or alternative, but had some elements of maybe hardcore punk rock, others had math rock involved, and in Pine Grove and Alex G's case, folk or country. But they all toured with each other, played the same basements in the same cities, and many were signed to run for the cover records. And of course, they had a lot of the same fans. I was one of those fans and part of the scene, and even though I didn't live in Philadelphia, Minneapolis was a frequent visit on their tours. I had friends who had Alex G sleep on their couch and had Pine Grove play in their basement. Now amongst all of these artists, Pine Grove was the one that really stuck out to me. Sonically, all the other artists were a lot more cohesive in sound and all being closer to traditional alternative rock. Whereas Pine Grove was more along the lines of a country folk band. It's crazy to me to think that they were accepted in this scene. I think there is really no genre that is more hated by alternative punk rock adjacent people than country. But Pine Grove made all these people look above that and love their version of this music. And I think that alone should attest to how great and special the band is, but there's a lot more. Besides their sound, which swapped the normal reverb drenched guitars and sudden kicks into punk rock overdrive for a banjo and steel pedal guitars, what really helped them differentiate themselves was the artistry from Evan Stephen Hall. Now, Pine Grove has two core members, Zach Levine, the drummer, and Evan Stephen Hall, the lead singer and guitarist. Now, all the members that have been in Pine Grove are very great and talented, but a lot of the creative core comes from Hall. Hall is an extremely unique guy. I think there are a lot of stereotypes about indie, alt-rock, punk people, and about how those types of people are, and Hall just really doesn't fit into any of those stereotypes. I mean this in the best way possible, but he is kind of a nerdy guy. Hall went to college in Ohio of all places and majored in creative writing. His interests included modernist literature, botany, nature, and geometry. None of these things are associated with alternative music or even seen as cool in that crowd, but I think that just makes it more unique and genuine feeling. Hall's interest in geometry and nature intersected at a nature reserve, which he used to frequent in college. The Brown Family Environmental Center had a specific way in which the pine trees were laid out in a geometrical repeating pattern. The place was coined the Pine Grove by students of the college that Hall attended, and Hall noticed how the geometrical pattern of the pine tree was similar to patterns in music theory. He named his band Pine Grove after this intersection of geometry and nature. Not only Pine Grove's name, but also its imagery features these themes of nature and geometry. The geometrical patterns that Pine Grove uses in their art and album artwork is about as iconic in the indie scene as Joy Division's art is. Hall's background in creative writing and literature makes his lyrics incredibly interesting and unique. He has a very creative word choice and stuffs each line with meaning and double entendre. Through Zinfandel eyes Through His lyrics are what first drew me to the band, particularly the lyrics off the song Size of the Moon. Got caught, got, was Caravaggio move. got caught in Caravaggio moves it was the line that blew my mind. I was a huge fan of Renaissance art at the time and Caravaggio was one of my favorite painters. Caravaggio's 
is very provocative and romantic. He plays with tension and light in a way that evokes so much emotion. So initially I thought this line was sort of romantic. An alternative meaning, once I thought deeper about it, is the way that Caravaggio paintings move in an artistic sense, whereas the light plays a central role, as figures are always moving in and out of the light in Caravaggio paintings. So perhaps maybe it's trying to say how the relationship is always darting from a light to a dark place, like a Caravaggio painting. Then the next line is we had some good ideas, but we never left that fucking room. Pair this with the one of the Caravaggio line. Caravaggio paintings are often set in dimly lit rooms with light illuminating over a figure. Light often symbolizes an idea or enlightenment in paintings. So the idea of we had some good ideas, but they never left the room take on a new meaning when you consider Caravaggio paintings and how light portrays ideas. Perhaps another way to explain this line is it could be a literary reference to the book Skin of a Lion, in which a character named Caravaggio is sort of a player and is very seductive. There are countless ways of interpreting this line and I might be overanalyzing, but Hall is a perfectionist when it comes to lyrics and he's been known to work on lyrics for years, tweaking them until they are finally perfect. And you don't have to dive deep into lyrics if you don't want to. The music is good enough on its own. And Pine Grove has had a huge cult following for years. It was actually six years before Pine Grove had a complete album out. And those six years leading up to the album grew them enough of a fan base for them to get attention from outlets like Pitchfork. Cardinal is often considered their seminal work and in my opinion, my favorite. It gave them a spot in the running as an indie band to look out for. Following Cardinal, there was Skylight in 2018, Marigold in 2020, and then 1111 in 2022. However, there is a part of the story that I want to take a little detour on away from why they are great. In 2017, their lead singer Hall was accused of sexual coercion in that he initiated a relationship with someone who worked for them and toured with them, and that the power dynamics within that relationship were unequal. What makes this even more complicated is the person who leveled the allegations against Hall wasn't actually the victim, but instead their therapist, which is complicated and bad for a number of reasons. Number one, therapists are not supposed to share information that are given in sessions to people, uh, especially to the general public. Two, the person who actually had the relationship with Hall did not want this information out in the public and wanted to settle this matter privately. Three, the therapists used this as an opportunity to promote their organization in Philadelphia. After releasing the information without the consent to the public, the therapist attempted to make Hall attend their therapy organization and sort of use the whole thing as a publicity stunt. It was a super messy and super terrible situation. Eventually, it reached a conclusion that most people seemed okay with. The actual victim and Hall met privately and she organized for him to take some time off and go to therapy. Both parties seemed like they were all right with this matter and this was the solution that needed to take place. But the controversy obviously left a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths. And I think this showed a bigger problem with the community. When I made a TikTok revisiting Pine Grove, someone commented, wow, you must have been so lucky to been a part of this community. And that comment really made me think for a minute and I realized I didn't feel like I was very lucky at the time. I never personally had any problems with any of the artists or people performing, but just the other fans in the community. I never had really any bad incidents, but a lot of people just generally weren't the best and didn't treat me the best in the long run. I think with a lot of the underground or indie scene of the 2010s, there were a lot of people who were struggling. A comment I see under these bands a lot when they get popular on TikTok is, I can't believe my depression music is just being turned into general vibe music. I think a lot of people who are depressed or struggling can cope in unhealthy ways, and that can cause them to be more toxic to the people around them. I also want to be clear that I'm not saying everyone who's in the underground music scene was like this. I think there are tons of people in the scene who were amazing and kind, and even if they did have mental health issues, they dealt with them in mature and healthy ways. 
implemented as an essential alternative ban. So people also existed. And they didn't make my own experience in the community so great. I think I walked into the community looking for just beautiful music. And instead, it made me more of a bitter, angry, and sad person. I think after that, I got into darker and angrier music because of these emotions. And for years, I ended up listening strictly to dark music. And I still like dark music, don't get me wrong. It's just probably wasn't the best that that was all I listened to 24 seven. I stopped listening to Pine Grove for years, mainly because it reminded me of the negative experience I had with that scene. And I couldn't listen to the music without that association. However, recently I've been getting into it again. There is just a huge new audience of people who are listening to their music. And when I see these people who are coming to discover Pine Grove's music, they're simply enjoying it because they find it beautiful. They don't know about how Pine Grove toured in basements for years and about the scene they were associated with. Seeing your depression music turned into vibe music can be a freeing thing because it means it loses its dark context, or at least that's the case for me. Seeing people enjoy and relate to music in a more wholesome and widespread way has allowed me to revisit this music and enjoy it again. It's not only cool to see a band that I grew up with being sort of cemented as an essential alternative band, but it also means that I can listen to that music again and just enjoy it for what it is. Beautiful music.